Hello everybody, Ben Woodruff here with another Falconry video. In today's video I'm going to be talking about a subject that might hit close to home for some people, a little bit sensitive, but also something that doesn't get talked about a lot, and so I thought I would share about it. Uh, before we jump into it, if you haven't already, please hit subscribe, of course. It really helps me out uh, trying to get this channel up and going and get some good information out there for people. And uh, with that being said, uh, I'm going to jump right into this, and I want to talk about birds dying which doesn't seem exciting but if you're i think there's some good information some good thoughts that i wanted to share even if you're already a falconer and certainly if you're considering getting into falconry now falconry of course you're caring for a live animal and with any animal of course there's proper husbandry involved proper diet equipment and with raptors that's through the roof you're weighing them in grams you're doing specialized food and maybe even food supplements um but what's very different about falconry is that we fly them free. We let them hunt. We, it's very strange because whether you are flying a bird that was acquired from the wild or whether you have a captive bred bird, either way, that is out of the whole circle of life, that whole life and death dance that exists out in nature. They're out of that. Okay. Either they were in it and you took them out, or they're captive bred and they were they hatched into the world out of it. But then we train them and we whoosh, insert them back into that world. You don't do that with really anything else. Not not really. Um, there and and because of that, that is part of the reason why falconry is so different and the bond we have is different. Now. I've said it before in a lot of videos, and I say it is a different bond. I say different, and people sometimes still hear stronger. I, look, okay, if you have a dog, if you have a pet dog or cat, if you have a hunting dog or a husky that you've trained to pull sleds, if you have a pack llama, a horse, a parrot that you've trained in great depth and is versed in all these words and is highly intelligent that you've had for 40 years or ravens that you're training for a bird show, a kookaburra, whether you're really attached to your pet anaconda, your, your, your ball python, whatever you have, fine. I get you have a bond and I get maybe whatever animal you keep is, uh, it's like a family member to you. It is still different. It is strong in a very different and unique way that I can I have yet to think of any other animal human interaction that really compares. There really isn't. Um, and 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 the second reason why it's so very different is intuitively, in a way that transcends really a good description that I could try to come up with. We know that raptors are something more in a symbolic way, in a spiritual way. And I'm not trying to get all, uh, you know, kumbaya on you here, but I'm just saying it is not coincidence that just about every culture in the world to ever come into existence views raptors with, with respect, reverence, fear. They might be gods, deities themselves, or they might carry prayers to the gods. They might be symbols or omens of death or good fortune, or, or, or we put, you know, we put them on our, our crests and our royal crests and on top of our flagpoles. So there's something, you can call it whatever you want, but there is something different, special, sacred, symbolic, that all humanity understands about raptors. And we know that, and I think that's part of the reason that draws certain individuals to falconry. But then when you're a falconer, you're like, yeah, I'm working with this powerful symbolic animal. And so then if it dies, if your bird dies, you're having a different experience. Not necessarily stronger than, but maybe stronger than, more powerful an experience, but certainly a different experience than just if your dog died or your horse died or your raven died. It is different. Now, death. In the wild, raptors live on the razor's edge of death. 70 to 80 percent of all raptors die their first year from a myriad of causes, starvation, shot illegally, killed by a bigger bird, electrocuted, hit by a car, they just can't find food, driven out of their territory, territory by larger birds. There's so many things, just running into a window. So many things that a first year bird of prey, the first year raptor can have happen to them. And that's the harsh truth. Uh, when we take in a bird from the wild or a captive bred bird and then you insert them back into nature, you are putting them back 
in the harm's way, which might seem counterintuitive to somebody who isn't a falconer. You're like, wait, what? So they're totally safe with you, well, relatively safe with you in captivity, and you're flying them free, and it got eaten by an eagle? It got shot by somebody? It went off and got landed on a phone pole, uh, got an electrical pole, and got electrocuted? What the, well, why did you fly it? Because the point of falconry is getting out there and actually let them fly and hunt. That is the point. Now, the survival rate of a bird flown in falconry is much higher than wild birds. But there are still risks. And every time you fly your bird, there are risks. And uh, you just never know what's going to happen. But in captivity, uh, if you never fly your bird, there are still risks. There are still diseases. There are still potential husbandry issues. You could have somebody... I've had a person come into my backyard and steal a bird and, and break my locks and steal a bird out from under me that, you know, was found later on dead because it still had equipment on. Uh, you ha you never know what's going to happen. And you could be like, well, then I'm flying my birds in the wild. Well, it doesn't matter because most of us still molt our birds, which means in the summertime, we fatten them up, let them grow new feathers. So during that time, you could be like, they're safe. Nothing's going to happen. And it's like, well, guess what? You still can have issues. Uh, my favorite jeer falcon I've ever flown. She was the hardest I've ever trained, but also the most rewarding, the best hunter of any jeer I've ever had. Her name was Jadis, and she flew for many seasons. Wonderful bird, and I pampered her in the summer. I gave her ice blocks to sit on at her choosing. If she wanted, she could hop off her perch, go on the ice blocks to cool down because she's an arctic bird. Gave her really good food, and one day I came out, and she had been stung in the face by a wasp, and that had killed her. And I'm like, are you kidding me? You never know, right? Um, you just, you never, ever, ever know. My favorite eagle that I've ever flown uh, was Holly uh, at Golden Eagle. That was a wonderful bird who survived West Nile virus. An amazing bird. Surviving West Nile virus and living to fight another day. That's impressive. Uh, and that was back in the day when that was kind of hitting and all brand new. And then, years later, she died unexpectedly from a concussion. Just totally, ran it's like, really? you kidding me. You never know. When it happens, and I'm not trying to tell, tell sob stories, if you're going to be a falconer, you have to understand, of course, every bird eventually dies. Um, and you could, in theory, say every death is preventable. Did you do something wrong? Eh, maybe. Maybe. Maybe not, maybe absolutely, but you. But here's the problem. I'm trying to prepare you emotionally for the what, what you can expect. For most falconers, when their bird dies, you need to understand that you instantly, the part of you that understands that raptors are symbols, the, the, the spiritual part of you, if you will, that is like raptors or something more, that part of you is just like, I've failed the world. I am the worst human ever. It's not, oh, poor me, my animal that I care for is gone. Like maybe with a dog, you're like, I am hurting. I have lost my, my family member, this dog that I've raised from a puppy. It's so much different. There's part of you that feels like I have failed the world. Ask seasoned falconers. And if they're honest with their emotions, they will relate to that. Uh, that there's this part of you that's like, I, uh, you know, this bird in my care, it was in my charge and I have failed that charge. And this self-hatred comes over many falconers where you're like, I've, I've failed this bird. I've, fa you know, even if it's not your fault, your bird just goes flying along and an eagle, bam, grabs it. And you're like, that eagle came from nowhere. You start to be like, I, I shouldn't have. I should have somehow magically known that eagle was a mile up in the sky watching my bird, and I didn't. But I, I should have. I shouldn't have even gotten into falconry because then I wouldn't have had this bird, and it would have died on this day. And you start. You have to be prepared for that. That comes. Those waves of just like, what am I even doing? Why am I even doing falconry? Uh, that comes. And what you need to do. This is why it is so important to have a few good falconry friends that you have this, the experience of falconry with one, two, three good friends that have your back and you have theirs who understand falconry. Your other friends, your family, they don't get it. They're not out there doing this. It's not in their charge. They don't understand what it's like to have a bird in their charge. And so they can't fully grasp. They can be like, wow, that must hurt. And they're equating it with losing a dog or something like that, losing a parrot. They're like, oh, I feel so bad. And it's like, it's not about me. It's different. It's a different kind of pain. 
that comes over you and talking to your falcon or friends and letting them know and sharing that pain is so important because they get it this is why it's important to have one or two or three good close falconry friends now be careful in this digital age with social media falconers are among the most opinionated even if their opinions are right they can be among the harshest and most opinionated people on earth and if you made a mistake of some kind if, if there's something you could have done different and you didn't and that is partly why your bird is no longer with us if that's the case and you go on to social media to get validation and be like wow i screwed up and i did this or that and oh man and oh i'm just hurting so bad a lot of falconers are just going to attack they're just going to be like well yeah you shouldn't have you blah 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 blah, blah. they're going to do that and you're just going to feel even worse i you do whatever you want i mean obviously i'm just sharing my philosophy on it but my thoughts are and this is what i tell my apprentices if you made a mistake pick up the pieces of your life don't air out your dirty laundry on social media that's not the place for it it's okay to let people know on social media if your bird passed away okay but if you screwed up or something don't air out your dirty laundry there. If you screwed up big time, that's when you tell your friends in private. And you're like, wow, I failed. I screwed up. Okay. But again, anything, anything, hindsight is 20 20. You, there's, you can always say, if only I hadn't done this or that. Okay. Then you've, you've got to understand that principle is that what are you going to do? You know, you can't undo the past. So if you screwed up, learn be humble have an honest conversation with yourself and say was this preventable what did i do wrong this is an unacceptable loss but it's happened i can't undo the past how do i make sure this never happens again how do i stay vigilant or think things through and learn a painfully costly lesson there are people who oftentimes after they lose bird get out of falconry temporarily or permanently uh, that it hurts so bad and so deeply that that people are just like, hey, I got I got to step back from it. That's okay if you need to do that temporarily or permanently. That is okay. Uh, you shouldn't do falconry just because you've been doing it. If you need for yourself emotionally to step away from it, do. But I am telling you also, when you are in the thick of that hurt and that you know self questioning and that doubt. Step back emotionally, turn to your friends, uh, and then decide, you know, that I'm letting you know there will be better days ahead. And there will be times ahead when you've had a chance to heal from it and think things through. And you're like, yeah, I do want to keep doing falconry. That you, your, you, your, your head will be held high again. And you will make it through those hard times. They hurt deeply. And as a falconry community, if somebody loses a bird, we need to be there for each other. And try to help in that. Uh, and just to touch on it, different people have different thoughts on what to do when the bird itself, what do you do with the remains? And everybody has their own opinion and their own thoughts. For me personally, I have a very special spot up on the mountains on the edge of a cliff and where a glacier put a giant boulder on the edge of a cliff. And I go there and I take them up there and I pile up the rocks higher and have a goodbye and a little ceremony. Uh, it seems an honorable way because it's this beautiful view of all these mountain valleys. And then every time I go there, just on a hike, I'll just put another rock on there. That's my way. Uh, I know some people who will just go into their favorite hunting field with that bird and they might bury that bird there uh, unmarked and just be like, hey, you're back with nature. You were, you came from the world, you're out, and now you return to it. Everybody's different. Um, you might be in a country where it requires that you turn over those remains to the government. That can be the case. That's how it is with eagles. And it's, it's very interesting in, in the United States, uh, eagles, eagle feathers, eagle remains uh, are supposed to go to the eagle feather repository to be used for, uh, for Native American ceremonies and for Native American ritual items. And so that's the laws here. If you have an eagle that passed away, uh, you don't get to bury it, and it goes back. So it's kind of different. Um, but whatever you need to do, find your way to grieve. But again, remember, this happens. So don't, if you're feeling that sense of beating yourself up, 
Don't dwell on that. Turn to your friends and remember there will be better days ahead. And always remember that even the, the most brilliant athletic bird in the wild, eventually survival of the fittest, eventually they'll have a moment of not looking the, the wrong way and an eagle gets them or they make a mistake and they tackle, they think they're going after a rabbit and they catch a badger and it shreds them to pieces and they can, you know, whatever it may be, it, it happens in nature as well. And it to choose to engage in falconry is to eventually it's to choose to eventually have your heart broken in one way or another um, but they say when you die your life will not be measured the value of your life will not be measured by the number of breaths you took but by the number of moments that took your breath away and for me i think falconry gives us that opportunity falconry the lows may be so low but the highs are so high to see a bird to build that very special bond of trust and then to understand each other to transcend the barrier of being radically different species and to be able to have them fly totally free and hunt and come back is worth the trade-off it is worth knowing that sometimes you will have the lows and the pains to experience such brilliant breathtaking uh, you know amazing experiences so that's my thoughts on the matter uh feel free to leave comments down below of what is normal for you how do you handle the grief of a lost bird and what, what do you have any personal ritual or regulation in your country on what to do with the remains um, if you haven't already please hit subscribe i hope this video provides useful to all of you and as always happy hopping